bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. You know, it took me three days to tune up the sewing machine. Every part in it is like a 1950s John Deere tractor. Huge, heavy steel parts. There's no plastic in it. <laughs> That's basically, you take halfway decent care of it, it'll last forever. Ah, I love my industrial sewing machines. Just for sewing leather, by the way. I'm not sitting there like a seamstress, you know, sewing up conventional clothing. It's good to actually have a skill that basically nobody does anymore. How many people do you know that are actually leather workers? It doesn't exist hardly anymore. Um, <clears throat> I try not to do videos on uh, esoteric topics, like extremely esoteric. The reason for that, it kind of scares the normies. Yeah. Um, people have been asking me to do videos on dowsing for a long time. I actually was brought up being taught how to douse by my grandfather. Um, the guy that actually uh, dug for the water line in the backyard back here, he's done lots and lots and lots of digs for water lines. Uh, he went out there with dowsing. Oh, yeah, this is where we dig right down here, to, you know, to cook up to the main line to do a, a clean-out line in my backyard. Um, Interestingly enough, this thing is called backyard oil. It's uh, about successful wildcatters that will like drill in somebody's backyard. Someone has a farm, basically, but it's in their backyard for oil. Drilling is really, really, really expensive. And so people can go bankrupt easily, and their business is psh, gone. And there's no successful oil wildcatter that doesn't use a professional dowser. Isn't that fascinating? Not a single professional oil wildcatter that doesn't use a professional dowser. Isn't that amazing? Talk about the secret religion. I like to talk about two aspects of the secret religion. One of the ones that's something that uh, I rail on. And I've made uh, more than a few videos. I didn't think anybody would watch it, but a lot of people found it fascinating. And I love to do videos on topics that other people don't discuss. One of them was on talismans. And people actually use it as a focusing device, just as, of course, I have thousands of videos on optics and of course we all know about optics and uh, like for a magnifying glass you bring things to a focal point on a conventional magnifying glass I got one over there and you can burn a hole in rock you take a large Fresnel lens made out of plastic you, know, you can literally burn a metamorphic rock with it which is some really really tough stuff so it's about focusing and these talismans themselves don't have power. And that's why I've laughed at uh, people that laugh at... Uh, uh, I use the word esoteric. I don't use the word occult. Occult is a pejorative word used by Judeo-Christianity to refer to anything. It's not a Judeo-Christian. Um, nothing at all connected to the New Age movement, by the way. Since you see this genuine crystal quartz ball on my table, don't think I actually do any scrying with it or I'm actually a crystal rubber. I actually I found this for like $20 which is like a hundred dollar piece of uh, quartz crystal. People use something as a focusing mechanism for the mind and one secret religion, and people don't talk about this, and it ruins most people's lives, and that is businesses. And the reason why businesses, just like governments, are so evil. Governments have flags, businesses have their logos. We know of all the, the logos of many popular businesses. People, I want to work for this business. I want to be an executive and I want to climb the ladder and be like CEO of uh, who knows what, Starbucks or think of any other company. These are no different than any conventional uh, cult. They are the secret religion where people throw their lives away to this uh, icon. They make these icons of focus. And just imagine any corporate logo or think of any government, which of course is their flag their propaganda and their leaders and you give and give and give you get nothing back it destroys your life the reason why there's so much quiet quitting going on right now that's what they're actually conventionally calling it is that people have been given enough time off due to this uh, uh, <clears throat> fake demic that's what I'm gonna call it that's my new word fake demic Given enough time off due to that, they can actually say, Hey, uh, I'm kind of busting my butt and, and uh, frying my life away at this dead-end job just so I have enough money to barely survive. You know, I'd rather have be broke, broke as hell sitting on my couch playing video games than like ruining my life 
working, you know, most people don't believe that they're going to have anything for Social Security and 401k, and you know what? They're right. All governments and all businesses are evil. I'll give you one perfect example, and I never thought anything else would happen different, nor was I expecting anything different. I'm the number one, uh, at least I was, I think I still am, number one person. I wrote a free book on Fujifilm. I was the number one salesperson in the entire world, because I really do love the product. I got a Fujifilm camera here. Uh, never asked for any free stuff from them. Number one seller of their gear. Never, ever asked for free stuff from them, okay? I did get some free t-shirts and hat. I, I did get a few free cameras to give away to people. But you know, I can't, you know, they treat me like a red-headed leper. You know, I'm just like a pariah to them, even though I've made them more money than God. And that doesn't shock me at all. You know, it burns my butt, but it is absolutely no way shocking because I know inherently, and I've known for a very long time, that all companies are just like any religion. They have these icons. This company has their own icon, IBM to Starbucks. And people either want to work for them or they throw all their money at it. How is that any different from any other twisted religion? These entities, both government and business, and this is only one half of the video, sorry, I'll get on to the other half here in just a second, the more esoteric part of it. They throw their lives away towards these businesses and these governments. These entities, I will remind you, is the most important thing. They are zombies in the true denotative definition of the term, zombie. They have no soul. They're soulless ghouls. Uh, I'm not going to try to imitate a zombie. Uh, they eat your brains. <laughs> they eat your soul. They feed off of your soul. They destroy your soul. They wreck your life. These are soulless entities that people are bowing down to. They create a golden calf. That golden calf will be a government's flag. The golden calf will be uh, a company's icon. Well, I I like wear Izod. Izod's my favorite company. Right? I wear polo or uh, Under Armour. <laughs> They've all got their silly little icons. You're just worshiping at the altar of a false god. These entities have no soul. Please stop ruining your life. This is the, uh, the secret religion. Then getting on to the, the metaphysics of this, and I laugh at people that uh, laugh at the idea of, uh, and what they are is they're talismans, just like this can be a talisman. It doesn't have to be a Ouija board. It can be something like this. I never use that for this. I just love quartz and I love crystals and rock formation stuff I always have. These are all petrified wood samples actually here on my desk. I love petrified wood. This is a piece of amber. Um, people say, well, like an Ouija board, there's no way that thing could work. It works no different than this. It's a focusing mechanism as a talisman. And I made a, a video that everybody seems to love on the talisman. And I think it's such blatantly obvious and yet no one makes videos on that or ever have that I know of. It's a focusing mechanism. They'll say, well, it's a piece of plastic and like pressed cardboard. Car cardboard? Can I say cardboard? Hello, I'm going to edit that out. Cardboard from Parker Brothers. You know, like 20 bucks or a modern one, right? And no, I don't own one. So there's no way this piece of plastic and cardboard, you know, is summoning up uh, entities or disembodied beings from the other side. It's just cardboard and plastic. It's made in China, mass production. It's my answer to that is exactly correct that's exactly what it is there is nothing in that plastic and cart there is nothing in water where memory is stored it is a specific geometry of water this is no different than a dipole antenna except a, an atomic one molecular atomic one for the manifestation of consciousness which of course requires water there's nothing in that press cardboard or that plastic planchette that you know little girls or you know uh, ignorant kids, oh, I found a Ouija board under Grandpa's bed, he's dead, you know, I'm going to try to summon Grandpa, and, you know, after several deep, intensive try, first time it doesn't work usually, second time you get a little something, third, you know, you start to, how good the focus is, you open the door, yeah, you open the door, and what comes through is not only not Grandpa, it's not different than going downtown to death row, and thinking you're going to have a talk with some decent people, like, no, you're on death row, honey. No, you've, you're down on death row. The only difference is you're inviting the death row inmates in through a talisman, a portal that you're using. There's nothing in that plastic or pressed uh, cardboard from Parker Brothers. You know, there's nothing magical there. Everything is through you as a focus to look up Egyptian false doors. What did you think Egyptians, do you think 
the ancient Egyptians, well, it's a religious ike. It's just an idea, a concept of the religion. I've heard that before from Egyptologists. What do you think Egyptians use false doors for? Look up Egyptian false doors. Um, there was recently an investigation done out at Kingman, Arizona. There's a, uh, a school there. And the school is built over uh, the old, I've seen pictures of it from the 1910s, the uh, cemetery in Kingman, Arizona. Well, the school decided to just like pave over. They say certain people took their, uh, you know, dug up their loved ones and they moved them to a different land. Well, it was only a certain percentage. Sounds like poltergeist, right? Basically is. And they paved over and put the school over top of a big friggin' cemetery. And, you know, when they were paving out, expanding the parking lot, oh, all of a sudden we dug up a lot of bones. A lot of skulls all of a sudden popped up while we were expanding the parking lot. Anyway, this the school is haunted as uh, hell. And uh, the, using a lot of, uh, I think of Oculus and the other device that uses uh, laser reflectance dots, they found out a lot of these entities were coming through this uh, one closet area and it turns out these uh, these uh, access closets where they store garbage and stuff in they have uh, dirt floors so these uh, entities are are coming through no different than Egyptian false door through these uh, the non floored sections of the school which are you know not where people tread but where they stick you know excess garbage in. it's just a regular dirt floor it's like oh it's interesting all of a sudden, these entities are popping up through the non-concreted sections of the center of the school. Um, fascinating. People, the reason why they can't see, we could say Akashic Records, we could say the fundamental substrate to the answers to all the questions. There really is an important passage, even from a religious text, that says, Seek and ye shall find, and that is not you know, a conventional or a uh, conceptual um, meaning. It, it is actually extremely literal. If you really, really, truly, with all your heart and soul, want to know the answer, how do you think I actually uncovered the missing secrets of magnetism? I can actually say, I don't think you care if you think it's egotistical or not. I, I don't care. I genuinely don't. That I am the first person that fully understands what magnetism is and I can tell you what a field is and how a magnet works. I desperately, and desperate isn't strong enough of a word, wanted to know that answer for a long time. And I saw it and the answer was revealed. The old passage, the religious passage, which is predating that religion, I'm not going to mention a religion of seek and you shall find, is more accurate than you realize. This idea of going into this Akashic place, kind of like a, uh, and this sounds esoteric, I don't want to scare the normies, um, but it's true. There is a place kind of like a, uh, a, a library, uh, a library of the cosmos that exists not in counter space, but underneath and behind and interior to all this phenomena. Where if you truly want to know and you seek, you really will find it. People that make a talisman of this antecedentness or recollection of the self, I talk about. Uh, Self-proximity, which wisdom is just a BS English word for self-proximity. And when I say self-proximity, people get confused. Like, what is self-proximity? Well, what's the opposite of dilution? What's the opposite of being scattered? What is the, what is the opposite of being diluted into this form, phenomenon, psychophysicality that people, you know, are worried and suffer perpetually in the, the slings and arrows of that which undergoes time, dimensionality, mass, and magnitude? you know, which is ever in perpetual flux and subject to something that ultimately doesn't exist, that being time. And people are confused. They've never thought that way. They've certainly never been taught about that. But there is this talisman of disobjectification, which is theurgy by definition. There's all this uh, esoteric, and I hate to use the word occultic because it is... Uh, is a slander word used by uh, religions to refer to true metaphysics, be it Pythagorean or otherwise. People have made external to themselves, or that which they truly are, because every branch of metaphysics says there's two selves, this external talisman that they see in the mirror when they brush their teeth or comb their hair, not that I've done that in a long time. And people can make a talisman out of anything. Unfortunately, they make portals within which and by which evil manifests. There is this one, you should look it up, it's the most haunted doll. It's called Robert the Doll. I actually watched an hour and a half long 
series about this, and it's not about this uh, you know, ugly looking doll. There was a guy that actually came possessed and he used it for decades as a point of focus. And when it was rediscovered uh, by his wife up in the attic, he got reattached to it and he imbued it as uh, like an active portal, what the ancient Egyptians did with these uh, false doors. Look up ancient Egyptian, look up uh, ancient Egyptian false doors. It's no different than a physical false door, except it was a doll. This anthropomorphic representation were in which and by which someone used it to conjure that which, of course, is not good. But they have been entranced by it. They get addicted to these icons, but the talisman that people see in the mirror, the psychophysicality, which is ever under flux and change, is another talisman where in which and by which people suffer. Anyway, all the people that are around this doll suffer, including uh, you know, the male owner who refound it again thanks to his wife after those... Uh, uh, many decades where he'd actually put things up. I think he went into business and he went into the army or something like that. I forget about that. But there's talismans for information which are antecedent to the psychophysicality, but things that are objectively focused upon always end up becoming portals for things that are not good. You cannot any sort of objectivity, whether it be the psychophysical objectivity or things that, uh, like the, uh, the Exorcist is based upon a haunted house, which is not in New York, but located in New Jersey. No, not New Jersey, excuse me, uh, St. Louis, uh, Missouri. They couldn't sell it for decades. Recently it was sold, but nobody still lives there because the place is literally haunted as hell. The whole exorcism house was not a little girl. The movie was a little girl based in New York, but the real exorcist house is a house in St. Louis, Missouri, where uh, I think a different kind of youngster, I think he was mentally different, they said he, he uh, used a Ouija board. Once again, pressed cardboard and plastic. And he put all his heart and soul into using that as a portal to open up... Uh, you know, an open door, a false door, excuse me, a false door from this world uh, to the one that sits just underneath it. And all sorts of bad things happen. They couldn't sell it. Everybody in the neighborhood knows it's haunted, not by reputation. They'd hear things moving in the house. There's, there's just, nobody could live there. Everybody that's actually bought it, sold it. But it was on the market for a really, really, really long time on Zillow.com. I'd always bring it up like every half year to see if it's sold yet. It's like, no, someone bought it. It's like, oh, no. And they couldn't stay there either. Yeah, well, we got a deal on it. Nobody wants to live here. Well, I don't care. I don't believe in that stuff. They, a couple of people have done this at that house. I don't believe in that. I'm going to buy. It's really cheap. It's a big house. Good location. Nope. Can't live there. Um, I kind of don't like discussing esoteric stuff like this because it does uh, kind of scare the normies. But look into false doors. Unfortunately, don't read what the Egyptologists say about false doors. They say that these are, you know, religious uh, um, icons for you know, giving homage to the dead. And no, the ancient Egyptians used false doors exactly the same way ignorant kids used Ouija boards, the same way anybody uses, unfortunately, a talisman. There is an antecedent talisman, but a talisman would be incorrect. This antecedent void. But a void is also too an incorrect void a word because a void is void of something else. There's no such thing as a void. Just, there's no such thing as a shadow or emptiness or, or wave. But that place where if you truly desire it, answers can be had. It's the very same place where I pull answers from on the most important uh, subjects, that the great mysteries of humankind. I find that of ultimate value. Maybe I should have spent a lot more money, I mean a lot more effort and time on focusing on things that would give me more time in life. I don't care about money. I care about having time to think and write and uh, understand and study and create. And I am quite inventive actually. Unfortunately, I don't have the money to uh, pay for uh, patents, but I hope this video wasn't too esoteric. I tried to keep it superficial without going uh, moderately superficial, without going too deep. I don't want to scare any normies away. I just wanted to give you an insight into things that seem so esoteric, and there's a lot of uh, creepy and spooky movies that are made about it, but it's actually hyper-rational. Metaphysics is not something that is fringe. I mean, it's fringe for a materialist. 
but it's not fringe at all. Um, but you have to be careful about dabbling into any of that stuff because it will burn you. It's like a kid playing with matches. It will easily burn you. Sometimes almost literally, but... It's neat actually having this amber when you heat it up with your body heat, even though it's basically 40 million years old, it's Indonesian amber. You can smell the trees that it came from. The, the heat, I think they're called, uh, f uh, there's a name for the scent that emanates from amber. But, because these trees went extinct, goodness knows how many millions of years. You can actually smell it when you heat it up with your body heat. It's absolutely fast, it's kind of like a, sm smells like a, a spicy, smells like something spicy, like a pine tree and something musky. It's like a musky, spicy pine tree. <laughs> that's about the best way to describe it. And that's fascinating to me because it's countless millions of years old. So how do you know how old it is? Well, we basically know how old Indonesian or Sumatran amber is. The fact that, you know, you can smell something that went extinct 20, 30 million years ago in your hand is absolutely fascinating. To me, I find that fascinating. You can get Indonesian amber really, really cheap on eBay, too, by the way. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope I didn't drone on too much in this video. I just kind of wanted to cover this topic lightly. Um, it's going to get really cold in a few days. I, I regret that. I can't stand extreme cold. Thank you, and have a lovely week.